perverts. I'm outside the Victoria pub in Walthamstow. I'm going to meet up with a couple of guys from the post London post black metal band Void. I'm going to do a little interview and talk about a tour they've got coming up and about a new album as well. Pint for St Edmunds. Okay, I'm here then with a couple of guys from Void. Was it post black metal now you call it? Is it oh, avant garde? It's, a bit of a point of it's not cool to call yourself avant garde. No, but, um, it used to be. <laughs> so in the 90s, avant-garde yeah. was all, all the bands described as now post seems to be the new word. Yeah, well, new because it's, word. it's a different genre though, isn't it? That, I don't know, I've never understood it myself. <laughs> those, those bands that were labelled the avant-garde metal scene, those bands still sound avant-garde now. The bands that are post-black metal, it's now it's a new genre, isn't it? It's more like this kind of like black gaze, more kind of like, yeah, oh, heads right. down, kind of like more hipster so trend. The post stuff is more shoegazy, kind of like. Exactly. Right, okay. Exactly. Okay. So we kind of suppose, like, sorry. stopping to use that term a little bit now, yeah. moving into our next album, because we've realised that actually, like with po like we don't, having we don't have post really yeah, 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 it's been kind of adopted by another. Uh, another genre. Okay. Post hardcore was something like, you know, from DC, it was like hardcore bands that went and started doing something more creative and yeah. bands like Fugazi and stuff. But now, post hardcore is like emo music. Okay, it? I've never understood all the blinking. There's so many really genres in the first place. I just listen to it if I like it, that's, that would do me, you know what I mean? Don't bother. So, anyway, let's give your names anyway for the, uh, for the, for the watching people. I'm Joe Burwood. And when you're drumming, yeah? I'm the drummer in Void. Yeah. And sometimes contributing guitarists. Okay. Things. What, just on the CDs or? Just on the record. On the record, right? yeah. I'm Matt Jarman. I play guitar and I produce the album. Cool. So you, so what's the most recent release then? You've got, you've got one that's come out recently? We've got one coming out. Oh, coming so, out, is it? Yeah. Right. We've got the artwork just come in now, which is very exciting. It's been done by Metastasis. Who's done Ulva and Watain and Bayamoth? There's a band called Metastasis. Metastasis. It's, not, it's not the band Metastasis, is it? There's a band called Metastasis. I remember well. that, no, 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 nothing to do with them. Nothing to do with that, no. Coincidence. It's an artist fellow, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a French design company. So that's come in, and then another French guy is doing the mix uh, Camille Girardot from Dreams of the Drowned. Okay. Uh, he is in Stagnant Waters. He's currently doing the mix, so yeah. So does that mean it will be a, a Gallic flair on the new release then? Yeah. You're going to be wearing berets and... <laughs> yeah. That's just racist. Shut up. I shouldn't have said that. Take that back. <laughs> it works. It works. Why not? Right. So yeah. So you've got some. Um, yeah. I've seen you a few times over the years. When, when did you form? When did you? When have you been going for a while now? Yeah. Well, they originally formed in '99, wasn't it? '98. 1999. Yeah. Wow. I started this with a chap. Another chap called Matt. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, we pre released this one in 2002. Oh, yeah, let's have a look at that then. Which was kind of, I guess, definitely that was post black metal at the time, you know. Right. So I can't call it that now, but it was a very kind of electronically infused album, so it's kind of like. Okay, so. For people who also like techno. Right, so some influences you didn't see that much in, at that time. Yeah. <coughs> no. Yeah, cool. exactly. For people who took a lot of drugs in the noughties. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Good. And then it went, uh, it went away for a while, the band, and in 2008, I believe it was, I met this good man here, and uh, I played him some of the stuff, some of the earlier stuff, yeah. I wasn't so much into the electronic stuff, but from the demos, and we decided to do the band again, and the fruit of that labour was this record here. Uh, I think I've got that one. Yeah, which yeah, I'm pretty also, sure I've got that one. That's kind of like all, all organic sound, there's a, mm. a bit of industrial on there in the interludes. But um, yeah, that was a band band rather than a project. Uh, also featuring Rob Archibald on bass, who played for, with Leech Woman and Wrong and yeah, uh, Concept. Yeah. And uh, Ben Lowe, who played, also played drums in Dead Existence. He was the vocalist for that band. Yeah. Who also performed with Joe in his... Yeah, in a previous band called Mundane that we moved to London with, me and some friends from Wales, uh, back in 2001. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very sad. I, I, we said we were looking for a vocalist, so I suggested we get my mate Ben on board. Um, and uh, yeah, when he came on board, to, he was with us for a couple of years before in the making and the writing of this. Yeah. And unfortunately, he took his own life um, before the CD got dropped off to us before it got released. So he got it in the post from the record label and the distro about uh, four or five days after he passed away. You know, it's yeah. pretty sad. So we never, never got to see it, unfortunately.
but I'd like to think of it as a, as epitaph, along with everything else he played on. Yeah, and you got the new guy, and then you got um, Levi. And, uh, yeah, oh, Levi from yeah. uh, from Cuthrell, Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you're you a band, Nick Cuthrell. This is it. Yeah, my death metal band. <coughs> and uh, yeah, well, he he's um, on the tape, which was the last release that we decided to make on well, the tapes on physical the form, also closer. digital. Yeah. When did that one come out? Because I thought that was reasonably new. I mean, I didn't. It is reasonably new. Yeah, yeah it came yeah. out in 2017. Oh, right. um, and but a very very limited run that right. I, I homemade by record running the tapes at home and yeah. printing I, out the inlays and cutting them out. That's and what I did back in the day with my demo. Yeah, right. on my, for my band. Yeah. But then they sold out, so we released it properly in 2018. Right. Um, but actually, we recorded the music in 2011. Okay. But yeah. we had. Tried because of course you know all the things that happened sur- for the band surrounding Ben's death yeah. and Levi joined the band just to fill in for Ben while mm. he was away on holiday yeah, oh unfortunately he never came back and so the whole thing got thrown into disarray and we didn't really know what we were doing but yeah. about five years down the road we decided to give it another shot we had the tracks recorded they yeah. sounded really powerful and we thought let's just do it again let's have another go at those songs yeah so levi came back in force and really like took the mic that time and decided yeah. no it's my i'm the vocalist now so yeah you had the, back. was that was that the one where you come back and you had, did we start calling yourself the unsearchable riches of void sure, yes. and i wasn't sure if it was a name change or what it was neither were we you were t- <laughs> it's still uncertain. <laughs> 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 what's, what's the uh, story behind that 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 phrase then? Uh, the, the story you put, you put void into Google and yeah. you never find it. Yeah, you never right. find it. Yeah, um, there's a funny article there's actually. Like Fifty been bands written, called um, void, is there? Um, oh, yeah, the I think it's twenty bands called void, just void, and then mm. there's like thirty six bands with void in the title or something. A chap in Toilet of Hell magazine has written a very funny article about. Okay. How, um, we are now the oldest band called Void in existence. Awesome. Although not the original band called Void, as there were several before us. Yeah. But <laughs> I think two bands were, came out before us called Void. But uh, yeah, I, yeah, definitely yeah, the we're DC the oldest now. one. I knew about that one. That was the only one I knew yeah. of. Yeah, and there was a thrash band as well. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah, I think I maybe that. somewhere in Eastern Europe. You okay. should know that. <laughs> it was well, mentioned no, right. in an article. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you couldn't find it anywhere, and stupidly we called this album Void. Right. So Void, so Void. Void by Void, yeah. Void, void by Void. It's on Spotify. Right. Uh, good luck finding it. <laughs> You'll find it somewhere on maybe page 13. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got, you've got official band camp and um, all that kind of thing, oh, yeah, yeah. you? Yes. And YouTube channel, I suppose, because I want to put all the links on the video description so people can go and check your stuff out and that. Yeah, yeah, we have a YouTube channel, uh, we have a band camp. You'll find everything by typing in the unsearchable void. So <clears throat> it became... It's a lot easier than trying to find one void out, one void in a, in a haystack of other voids. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the unsearchable riches of void was the title of this cassette. Yeah. You can hear it coming on now yeah. the system. No, That's it's it. Not. <laughs> and the unsearchable riches came about because if we typed in the unsearchable void... Yeah. You get a lot of things, the religious stuff, you know, right. theology about the unsearchable riches of Christ. Yeah. So that is now our moniker, the right. unsearchable void. Okay, cool. Yeah. And what's, um, so this is the more, this is, well, you're post black from the first one, you said, kind of, before it was called post black. Or was that the one you was the most, you had more electronic kind of. Uh, yeah, that was electronic. I mean, yeah. post black metal and avant garde, it's not, you know, these labels they get given you, don't they, really? Yeah. Um, a lot of people just make the music and then let other people decide what they are, don't they? Really? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We we did get good rev- We get some great reviews from this tape. Yeah. But we, nothing that was able to explain what exactly we were doing. Yeah. Just um, they like what you were doing. But somebody said uh, the Lords of Metal guy called it. Oh, it's like. Um, Glenn Benton fighting off an army of Teletubbies. I think that was specifically in reference to Levi's performance. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, because you kind of like, um, I don't know when it started, I remember when I was seeing you before live, you were just like this dressed in normal garb, and now you've kind of got like some, well, you, I think when you start doing the Unsearchable Witches, you kind of, I don't know, they're personas or just costumes, what is it you're doing now with it? I, I think there was, there was the costume theme for a while, yeah. right? And then, 
Well, we had the, if you look at the logo, the, the, the last yeah, logo seen, we had then, yeah. it's basically like a, made up of the, the sort of characteristics of I the four masks there. that we kind of yeah. that we put on. Mm. Which I thought was quite a nice nice touch. It, is, the, uh, it is quite smart. I mean, it's a phase that we went through. I don't know if it's something that's going to be permanent or come back, but we're, you know, we're toying with some new logos at the moment and just... Um, well, I lost my mask and yours broke, didn't that's it? That's very true, yeah. <laughs> so really I'm getting the to stick with the logo much longer, <laughs> unfortunately. So that phase is over now then, isn't it? Because last time I saw you, you was, you was uh, rocking the feathers and whatever. That's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've done it in different, uh, to different extents and, you yeah. know... Uh, There'll always be a visual element in the yeah. band now, thanks to that experience. I mean, I think we learned a lot, but there was uh, there were some very awkward moments, you know, costumes snagging yeah. in cables, and you you know right. you learn but you it, learn how easy yeah. it is to pull these it's things off pretty quickly. Balls of fancy <laughs> dress. <laughs> well, what about the positives of it though? Does it help to get a band noticed? That kind of thing. Did they, was it a talking point that got people interested in, in the band more because of the fact you were dressed up? Did that have that mm. anything any like that? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't say I've noticeably noticed any reaction, but we had some nice comments about about, yeah. about it. You know, I think it appeals to a certain certain crowd of the, the metal lot, doesn't it? They, there is some a free people like the dressing up, the element, theatrical side, there, which is good. Yeah. yeah, and some people aren't bothered; they just want t-shirt and long hair, and they're quite happy. But yeah, it's true. <laughs> it so. definitely did. I mean, we always had like uh, with our shows, the music is pretty intense and extreme, and it doesn't fit like easily into a genre that people will be familiar with. Yeah. So it's easy for people at a show to quickly get put off because they don't give it a chance. The costumes helped us give the people something while they adjusted to the music. So right. it was always good to start playing a show in the costumes. We didn't lose the crowd ever, you know, which for a, dare I say it, an avant-garde band is in certainly an achievement. You know, yeah. If people are expecting, you know, straight up riffs, blast beats, and power chords, you know, yeah. when we come on, they're going. There's going to be a, a process of adjustment, and the costumes provided something that was instantaneous that allowed people to then adjust the music. Yeah, I wonder if there's like an element of like people not going to the bar because they want to see what you was looking like. Yeah, so you know, get people watching more, keeping stay, keep them watching. Hopefully, That's yeah. So sure. what are these guys going to do? Yeah, cool. what's this all about? Well, but um, who does the lyrics? You all take part in the lyrics or? Uh, on the new record, which is coming out soon, it's been a mixture. Um, Levi has done some, I've done some, and Gerardo, our bassist, has done some. Levi did nearly all the lyrics on the tape right. when he became the vocalist, so yeah. uh, he really took control of that. And yeah, uh, that's... So ben, ben Lowe wrote his lyrics on this record, didn't he? Uh, yeah. You wrote um, a couple of them as well, didn't you? And a few of them were from the demos, weren't they, from the original vocalist? Yeah, from the what? original vocalist who wrote all the words, of course, before. What, the are, what, are, they, what are you tending to write about, though, as a band? Are there certain subjects that you embrace? With your music, I or? can't really understand what the hell Levi's <laughs> talking about. When I read his words and listen to what he's talking about, I get very distinct images yeah. come into my head, but I can only guess at what he's talking about. I mean, it's like sometimes you, you think he's talking about something like that sounds like a painful experience, you know, like the, the like in this one, the, the the face of a the skull of a of a child, like you know. Uh, you get a very clear imagery, but then he next sentence is talking about something like about some kind of like ecstasy, and right. it's almost like uh, <coughs> he just gives you a very visceral, very kind of like direct feeling of emotions about fluctuating between loss and the beauty in pain. You know, right? So I'm not sure what you'd call that <laughs> abstract or something like that. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, yeah, like so. poetry or something. I don't know. Some yeah. Yes, absolutely, abstract. Yeah. Whereas uh, with the with the new album, the new album is kind of like more based on a story where all the lyrics form a, a kind of a chapter right. in the story of a particular guy. Yeah. The Hollow Man is his name, and uh, it starts off with him reading the poem, "The Hollow Men," by T. S. Eliot. And then from then is basically his mental breakdown and the experience that that guy goes through. So all the lyrics form a chapter in that trip. Yeah, right. 
The downward spiral, is it? Or? The downward spiral, yeah. yeah. And he believes that he is dying and uh, the things that he goes through and ha what happens to him when he comes back to reality. And is this mostly your Luke's on this one? No, mostly it's Gerardo and oh, then right. Levi and I also contributed. So did you come up with a concept for it before and, and then say, then yeah, you do that song, you do that song, or how did you work it out? The concept was a dream, actually. We uh, decided to do the first song uh, using the inspiration from T.S. Eliot's The Hollow Men. Right. That was something that Gerardo wanted to do. He loved T.S. Eliot. And uh, I looked at readings of the, the poem yeah. on the internet and quickly found Marlon Brando reading it as part of Apocalypse Now. And so we used that directly. We just took the sample of that and plonked it on a song and magically the song started, started to come together. It really started to write itself. Then after having that experience and being pretty off my head, I guess, <laughs> I had a dream about what happened to the man. I suppose it may, maybe it was myself in the perspective of the dream and him believing that he's died and then his reincarnation and then what happens in the world. And that formed, luckily, it was one of those lucid dreams that, you know... You, you remember when you... You can you write it down, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. And uh, then Gerardo started filling in the chapters with actual words. Cool. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> what have you ever written in lyrics then? <laughs> no, I'm not much of a lyricist, to be honest. I'm more of a riff creator, right. rhythms, you know. Do you do guitar as well in the in the in the actual music? I know you play you play the drums. I, I played guitar, guitar on one track on this album, and, I, and I wrote the entire uh, composition. Right. And um, on this album, I contributed probably two or three riffs, I think. And right. on the new one, I've done a couple more. I've done at least maybe four or five riffs on this one. Um, yeah. So yeah, just bits and pieces really. Um, I tend to just like to drum and I sometimes help with the arrangement of things or yeah. the structure. I might suggest another bar of this here and let's try this there and we sort of thrash it out for its finalising kind of thing. But you do most of the recording, uh, did you say earlier on? You do all the recording yeah. and mixing and that? Yeah, of all of the releases. Yeah, so. I thought you do a bit of that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, with my own you, bands yeah. and other, yeah. other underground bands in London I've recorded. Mo but, mostly sound and live sound I used to do as well a lot. So Yeah, but, um, but you, just, you prefer to do it all yourself? Like, cause Well, when we did the drums, yeah. Joe was doing the recording with me. You know? Right. Yeah, we, we used his together. gear for yeah. recording the drums. So, yeah, I mean... And it's like, and you, so you've all, like, was it all like <laughs> recorded in your own house kind of thing or...? The new one, yeah, it was yeah. recorded in my own house. I used to run a recording studio, which still exists, although I'm not so actively involved, called DSI in Tottenham. And this one was recorded mostly in there, DS, yeah, mostly in DSI. I this one was recorded. It might be if you hold them up when you say this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the tape, yeah. People are going to get seasick. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. Cool. Mostly at the DSI studio. Yeah. The first uh, place. Except for the vocals, Except which, vocals, which yeah. were five years later were recorded at my, my own studio. Was okay. this done at Greyhound Road? Any of it? That one is well old. That was recorded in various houses when I was a student. Right. Various houses in kind of Isle of Dogs area. This one was recorded, the drums in your bedroom, my bedroom and the guitars my and vocals in green. my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, proper bedroom uh, demo <laughs> there, Nick, or, or recording. Right, and, um, right so you, still, you, you do a fair few gigs, and you've got a, couple, a tour coming up soon that we want to talk about and little, get the road out on to people. Little, we've got a little UK tour this September with the uh, uh, um, Chilean uh, heavyweight Death Metal Pioneers, uh, Thorn of Fire. Let me hold it up to the camera while you talk. <laughs> yeah, we, um, I met the Thorn of Fire guys, uh, I think it was last year, when they came over for a show, uh, and I ended up getting asked if I could put them on, and uh, they stayed at my house, we played at the Dev, they were super nice guys, I was really blown away by how fucking brutal and technical they were, and, you know, um, just a really nice guy, so I was like, they asked me, we're coming over again to play some shows in Germany, we're thinking, because um, they're on a German label, Right. they've released about, um, I think, six records now, and uh, this is their sixth European tour. Wow. Um, yeah, we've been going for quite some time, quite a following, um, and they've asked if I could just help out. I think they got on with us, they enjoyed our company. I took them out sightseeing to see Big Ben, and that was their <laughs> first, first sort of time in London. Yeah. And uh, on the same day, it was a bloody Tommy Robinson match, unfortunately. Oh, right. <laughs> like, Who are these guys? Are they like 
<laughs> football hooligans or something? And I was like, yeah, the fascist football hooligans. They were like, fuck you, fascists. So I was like, Shh. there's loads of them. Run, yeah. yeah, I mean, for them, like coming from Chile as well, where that kind of thing was yeah. like their day to day life. Right, yeah. you know, they come over to the other side of the world and think, oh, freedom, you know, joy. Yeah. And then they see that. I suppose it was a good thing. It was Maggie Fatty's mate, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Was it Maggie Fatty's mate, General Pinochet or yeah. something? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. He posted the a tin pot actually. general and the iron woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what you got? So it's three dates, is it? So it's three dates here. We've got um, Birmingham on the 11th of September, followed by um, in a place called the Dark Horse. Then right. we're playing in the, um, the metal pub, the Griffin in Bristol on the 12th. And then we're finishing off in London on the 13th. Now, uh, they are, do have another show as well on the 14th, which they've arranged themselves with another promoter in Brambury, uh, Banbury, I think. Oh, um, right. In the Wheat Sheaf, I believe. Okay, I've heard of that. Uh, one, looks yeah. like a good show for them. It was unfortunate, though, I had another concert with uh, one of my other bands uh, in Netherlands, actually, playing the, the um, what's it called? The Bloodshed Fest with uh, my other band Antisect on a Saturday, and that was booked oh, right. around the time that this was talked about. So. I had my so, you were, so after the gig at the Dev, you're going to the Netherlands for your punk band? For another one, yeah. Cool, you're it's a button for punishment. Tyson some four <laughs> days, but we'll uh, see it through. Do you? But we'll see it through, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's something about Thornifier uh, that when we played with them the first time, and then we took them back to Joe's house. Um, we'd had a few drinks and the guy was telling the story about why he was doing the music mm. and it was really nice to, to hear, you know, he was from like obviously a very Catholic country and a very strict upbringing and he was talking about how metal had been like, you know, the absolute thing that he definitely shouldn't do and right. for him it was like a very cathartic experience to be yeah. able to play in a band, you know, to be so defiant about against like, you know, what you've been taught. Yeah. And uh, it I really comes through for a lot of people music. in those you know, countries like where they're, he they're heavily uh, browbeaten by the religious people, they kind of, you know, it's a release for them, isn't it? Oh, yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I haven't seen heavy metal in Baghdad. I have to, I have there to are check a out few. That there film. are a few. There's a band in Bahrain. I know. We just can't. So I'm not too sure what the uh, what the religious uh, people are like in Bahrain. If it's uh, very strict on, I'm not too sure. There's a few other bands from that area as well that I've played, but yeah. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's more power to them, man. Yeah, in the face right. of the oppression. Yeah. It. He's also written a book, actually, uh, Victor, the guitarist from uh, Thornfire, which he's trying to, which he's releasing at the moment. Um, uh, he had his book album. It's about him being a metalhead, actually, growing up in the Catholic background of Chile. And yeah. He's wrote a full paperback novel about this um, <coughs> called Chilean Burger Country or something it's called. I think it is called something like okay. Chilean Burger or something. <laughs> uh, but he's going to be promoting that on this tour as well when we're here. I'm cool. actually in the process of trying to arrange like a, a book uh, a book release, book signing sort of little event when he comes here. So possibly on the Tuesday, the tenth. Okay. I want to try and arrange one either in a record shop or a friend's bar somewhere, That's and just idea. have a little event, play the play the latest album by then, put the yeah. you know, books out, and kind of thing. That'd Quickly cool. translate it in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he not? Is it in English? I think, I think he's getting them in the process. Oh, of getting right. them he's getting them sorted. Okay. Right. So you're gonna are you um, giving us a couple of CDs to do as a giveaway as well? Yes. Yes. So what, what, what can people uh, win if they give, leave a comment on this video and... Well, we've got two bunches of everything. Whoa, nice. Yeah, so um, I have two copies of each. Wow. So two lucky people can get the entire back catalogue. Wow, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> not, not including the, the d early demos. Right, no. Well, so cult that even I didn't have them for a while. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> So yeah, one lucky listener or viewer will get a little stack like this. Excellent, that's fucking awesome. So, um, oh, and, and t-shirt, yeah. Oh, I've got one medium and one large. Okay, so, cool. So uh, I don't know if you're going to find out oh, who's, well, who's big and who's yeah, small. Yeah, whoever wins gets the first choice, I suppose. Whoever comes one first out person. of hat. <laughs> one small. Yeah, and so everyone should just uh, go and check out. I'll put all the links below in the, in the description for all your pages and that. Facebook and YouTube and whatever other. Sure. So just message me then whatever links you want to put on the sure, description. Sure, sure. And we'll probably put in that. Would you, do you reckon it'd be good if we put the video of your Hollow Man uh, track on the end of this video so people can get an idea of it? Or yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, we've been talking about the Marlon Brando thing. Yeah, yeah. so we, uh, in advance of releasing the album, we made uh, a mix of the first song actually using the Marlon Brando sample that I talked about before. Yeah. Uh, and none of our own vocals. That's not the version that will come out on the album. Oh, it's going to be different. It's an exclusive. 
But it's, right. nice. it's, 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 it's a taster of. It's a taster, yeah. The music is the same, um, yeah. but the vocals, our vocals are not on it. We've used the Mar Marlon Brando sample instead. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's the 40th anniversary of the film Apocalypse Now, so, you know, go and see the film. Yeah. I, I did the audio description for it, so even if you're not blind, get the yeah. audio description, because, you know, you can know that it's been done by a true fan. <laughs> so I'll plug my audio descriptions here as well. <laughs> I'm not selling anything. That is quite weird, isn't it? Because you, you was approached to do the audio descriptions after you'd used it in your song. And it was a weird coincidence, yeah. yeah. But after we finished making that little video with the uh, Marlon Brando sample, the, yeah, I then got, got asked to do the audio description for the film. No one will hear it, you know? A few blind people will see it. Yeah. So I hope that they enjoy it. I hope we've got a plug in for your band at the end of the audio description. If you enjoy this audio description, please check out my band, Void. Sneak that in there, mate. DVD special yeah. features. I've been told for adding uh, things on the end. Of, I told off for adding things onto the end of audio descriptions before, though. So. Oh, right. oh, that's a story that's got to be worth telling, surely. What did you What did you put at the end, and what film was it? It's impossible with these audio descriptions. You know, I spend like a week writing a bloody book. You know, I, yeah. you know, I convert films into audio books, and I put everything into it. And then at the end, there's no feedback. So I was putting just a something. You know, if you're using this service and you're hearing this. Get in touch with me to let me know what you think. <laughs> and you got told off for it. Like that. Yeah. That's a shame. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm still in work. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to say to uh, anybody? Anything else they should be checking out? Or um, no. Um, you have a projects or something like that? Uh, What's that on the Kithro? Oh, my man Kithro. We've got a new guitarist. Um, we've got. Uh, we've had a new drummer for about a year now. A guy called Francis, who also oh, plays right. in a cool metal band called Atom. Who were kind of proggy, slightly uh, like the death kind of. Why would you have a drummer? Stuff. He was around a lot of bands. Uh, Ad Adriano. Adriano, that's it. Uh, well, he was. Uh, yeah, he, he was in a band with I think a guy called Ti Tiago, who was in In a Rage years ago, and uh, they've got a band. I can't remember the name. But, um, is it kind of, was he on a Doom Deffy kind of band as well? He was sure for a while. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Eyes of Solitude or something that's like that. Solitude. I don't is think he's with them anymore. I know he was in Insalubrious. I think they were called something Insalubrious, which was members of. Um, Unfathomable ruination and some other oh, yeah. kind of very techy, gory, right. super fast blast stuff, which is his uh, forte. Fantastic job. Hi, Adrian. <laughs> we love you. And <laughs> now uh, we've got some new uh, material in the pipeline with Cuthral. We're going to make a full length soon. Um, Levi's playing bass and vocals now. Okay. Um, so it's more of the stripped down death metal lineup, two guitarists flanked by the bassist singer in the middle. And uh, some of it's thrashy, some of it's death metal, some of it's a bit black metal, some of it's a bit grindy, it's a bit of everything, as it was before. And, uh, hopefully we'll be uh, hitting some stages soon, possibly a gig in December. We've been asked to hit at 14th of December, I think. Uh, details to come. <laughs> okay, well, maybe we'll do an interview for that one as well. <laughs> All right, that's it. Nothing else you want to say? So we're just going to go straight into that Hollow Man video then, and maybe I'll put a bit of live footage at the end as well. Nice. Enjoy. Uh, enjoy.
access to it that does have grants of it. Those can stay in the field. The haven is the way the haven. Not that final reading of the Twilight Kingdom. This is the dead land. This is the captive land. Here, stone images are raised. Here they receive the supplication of the dead man's hand. Is it like this in death's other kingdom? Walking along. At the hour, we are trembling with tenderness. Lips that would kiss, warm prayers to broken stone. The eyes are not here, there are no eyes here. This valley of dying stars. In this hollow valley, this broken jaw of our lost kingdom. Last and meaning places we grouped together in a void speech. We gathered on the beach of the Tulin River. Sight. This is the island we have here. As a perpetual star. Not a fold. Road. Death Twilight King. The hope of the empty man. Between the idea and the reality, between the motion and the act, the walls of the shadow. The line is the kingdom.
as hell with us. The unsearchable void dot com.